Hi, how are you? It's Finavar here and I'm back with my next video where I'm showing you how I made the project inspired by our daily cafe. Uh, in December 2019, we are all inspired by lights and sparkly things. It's close to Christmas, so I think this was uh, kind of natural. I wanted to make something with a bit of Christmassy feeling, but on the other hand, I um, not really that much into traditional Christmas ornaments. So I wanted to make something a little bit on the edgy side, something that would marry together my favorite things such as uh, gears and cogs, all the steampunk stuff, and um, something that will be coming from the ocean because I love ocean so much that I keep collecting shells and seaweeds and other similar things. So my idea was to take an old um, candlestick that was naturally beautifully patinated and um, I think I got it somewhere on the flea market and combine it together with the starfish which I bought somewhere during my travels. It's quite large starfish and I was thinking it would be a really nice um, focal point for the composition that I can put under a big glass dome. I bought some of these when I saw them uh, in the home decor stores and now from time to time when I have a moment I try to make another composition that I can put in my house. I'm not a huge fan of the hot glue because sooner or later whatever I glue with that is going to chip off and I believe it only works for the paper flowers or fabric elements, artificial flowers. But in this composition I had to use it for temporary attaching part of the things and um, as you can see this was doing quite good job especially later i was using heavy body gel to secure it all perfectly my candlestick was of course empty inside so i had to find a solution how to attach my starfish on the top of it i decided to go for a very simple idea i just used uh, pieces of cardboard glued together with mm, hot glue and then secured on the top of that with heavy body gel which is my ultimate go-to product when it comes to any kind of dimensional collage or assemblage and um, when it comes to the heavy body gel uh, it of course dries a little bit longer but it's very very flexible and very strong after drying so I was sure there will be no problem and all the elements I will glue the heavy body gel they will stay together even if my hot glue will chip off. I attached extra piece of cardboard also to the starfish to make it easier to mount it on the top of my candlestick and I started looking for the embellishments and elements I can use to create mini ocean inspired composition on the bottom of my um, home decor that will be inside of the dome. Um, for gluing I had to use combination of the uh, hot glue and heavy body gel but the results are going to be pretty amazing. I started with attaching some of the natural moss on the top of the candlestick. Um, I was thinking it's going to be great imitation of the seaweeds. This moss is flexible and it's kind of easy to shape it in the way you like it. For my composition on the bottom of uh, my decorated dome, I was using combination of um, shells and urchins and um, natural seaweeds and natural moss. Also, I was uh, putting uh, elements that come from my own collection, such as mechanicals, some flowers, some cogs, depending what I was able to find and what was fitting into that spot to create natural uh, looking and um, kind of interesting look. Um, I had quite a big collection of the sea urchins and shells from my travels uh, to South Africa, and I really wanted to show them in my projects. I, um, I started to uh, decorate my own bedroom, creating some kind of, let's say, cabinet of curiosities. And 
these kind of um, projects will fit into that space perfectly. Whatever I was gluing with the hot glue later was secured with my favorite heavy body gel. So there was no worry that elements will chip off or they will come, up, mm, come off from the project. I know this is not really mm, natural for me combination, but for such a dimensional um, project when I use so many natural elements, I had to limit drying with the heat gun because I didn't want to burn my seaweed or my uh, moss by drying too much. The more I was working on the project, the more ideas I had and more elements I wanted to add on. I was experimenting with some parts which later I didn't really keep because they didn't fit into the space and I realized that um, I have to put a dome on the top as well and if I put something too close to the edge it may be a problem. But um, I was trying to make a nice mix of the natural and mechanical elements. Um, my intention was to keep as much of the natural color as possible, however, part of that composition, especially the metal parts and my mechanicals such as flowers or cogs were really dark against uh, the natural elements, so I had to work on them a little bit more. To change the color of my metal embellishments, I used a tiny bit of uh, white heavy gesso from my Art Basics collection. This gesso I mostly applied on the metal embellishments, but also on some of the shells and uh, maybe in some parts also on the moss uh, when I decided it is a little bit too dark in that places. I combined traditional painting with a little bit of spraying to make the color mm, flow a little bit and um, be thinner in selected places. Of course this is not traditional way of using gesso but for this project it would really worked well. I've dried my gesso with the heat gun of course very very carefully and then I decided to add extra shiny effect. Of course, we needed the shine, the lights, and I've decided to use combination of different glitters. Glass glitters and traditional glitters in the colors that would be matching my composition. So mostly silvers, silvers, um, golds, and natural glass color. I've decided to um, use soft gel, uh, glossy soft gel, uh, as my starter. It's very very sticky liquid gel medium which is easy to apply with a brush and then sprinkle selected glitters on the top of my project. My another idea was to use art stones which are textures which mm, can easily imitate sand or little rocks on the bottom of the sea. Because my art stones are the biggest elements I had to apply them before the glitters. Together with my bigger art stones and my mini art stones, which are sprinkled on the top of them, I also added a bit of pearls. These are memory hardware pearls from Frank Garcia. And I was thinking, what's oh, the perfect addition to the bottom of the sea? So I uh, used my heavy body gel to place them in two or three selected locations that they will look very natural and beautiful. After the pearls, I added even more of the soft gel just in case if, you, if it got too dry and then I was ready to sprinkle my uh, glitters of different kinds, starting with the bigger ones, for example glass glitters, then going through more fine ones such as art sugar or my fine glitters from Luminous collection. It's basically your own decision how much sparkle you want on the project, some people really like very shiny projects and this one was supposed to be mm, a bit Christmassy, a bit like uh, home decor we have for Christmas so I didn't stop myself and I used quite a lot of glitter. 
When the glitters were dry, I could start working on the delicate touches to change the color of my composition. It was uh, quite pale and I wanted to add more of the natural looking colors to it. The easiest way would be just using acrylic paint or spray. So I've mm, taken uh, one, some of my favorite colors of liquid acrylics from my Art Alchemy collection, such as uh, emerald and uh, amber, tur deep turquoise and uh, also carmine for the extra rusty color. I started touching selected places of the composition with the very small brush with a tiny bit of paint on it and using the spray, uh, sprayed water to make sure the composition will look more natural so the water will take the paint in all these textures and the colors will get much much lighter. The part of the secret with this technique is to take really small brush and a tiny amount of paint to make sure you won't put too much. And um, it is not really easy to stop yourself sometimes because this process is very addictive. I know this is not really so easy to see on the project because it's so dimensional and I was working on a very strange angle, but look at the size of the brush I've picked. It is tiny and the sprayer is always on uh, on hand so you can spray every time when you are touching part of the project with paint. This way it's very um, easy to uh, get to the uh, results you will like. First I have applied my greens, turquoise and browns. Later, I um, decided to add a tiny bit of rusty touches, especially I had some rusty mechanicals in my collection, uh, in my composition already. So when the paint was dry, I could add extra colors without uh, being worried that maybe colors would mix. And, you know, acrylic paint is permanent after drying, so I can always add more if I want to, making sure uh, I have my first layers uh, dry it with the heat gun or dry it naturally. When I was happy with the amount of rust I had on my project, I started to work on the final element, so the starfish. I wanted to make sure I can glue it properly on the top of the candlestick and everything will fit, so I had to check with my glass dome is everything is on the right track. When I had my starfish in front of me, I started to uh, try different elements to see what I can do to make it look mm, really cool and more like mechanical or steampunk. And um, I had to experiment with some elements. Finally, I made a decision to focus on my vintage art pebbles and just a few of mechanicals such as um, screw heads or um, vintage looking patinated and rusty knobs. I've glued all these elements with heavy body gel. I started with pebbles and little screw heads and then I wanted to add uh, knobs on the top of my starfish. That was a little bit challenging, but I was patient and I was really adding uh, quite a generous amount of the heavy body gel to make sure everything will stay in place. I was drying the project from time to time to make sure elements are staying in the right position and I was moving towards the um, last elements quite quickly. If you are used to using the gel, uh, this kind of gluing will be quite simple for you. When I attached the biggest element, this um, patinated uh, vintage knob, I used a small brush to get rid of the excess of the heavy body gel. And of course, I made sure to dry it before I started adding uh, more elements. I wanted to make sure everything is safe and secure before I move my starfish a little bit too much.
Once I was done with my mechanicals, I had this moment of enlightenment that I really want to use those tiny urchins I had uh, on my table, trying to fit tiny urchin on the top of the spiky part of the um, starfish, making sure I have one urchin on the top of each of its arms. And um, I had to use hot glue for that step and I had to be very careful because these little ones are very fragile and I didn't want to break them by accident. My very last step was mm, just adding some soft gel and matching a mini art stones and glitters on the top of the starfish as well so it is going to work together with the um, bottom part of the composition um, I did, didn't really make any changes I just used the same colors and the same um, art stones I used on the bottom part and I took I was tapping off the excess over my rubbish bin to make sure uh, my working space will be quite clean if it's possible when the composition was basically ready, I added the last uh, drops of the Carmine liquid acrylic paint and watered that with uh, water that I had in my sprayer to again make sure the look of the top matches the bottom. So my starfish is really steampunky and a little bit rusty. Again, I used the smallest possible brush and I was trying to be really careful with the application to make sure I won't repaint the starfish by accident because I love the natural color of it. Finally, I use a very generous amount of heavy body gel to attach my starfish on the top of the candlestick and I used uh, my hot, sorry, my heat gun to dry it and secure it in place before I let it dry naturally. Uh, because this is very dimensional home decor, I really wanted to make sure everything will stay in place so I took it in a warm uh, spot uh, in my house and I let it dry until all the elements were not moving anymore. Then the last thing I had to do, it was just placing the glass dome on the top of it and proudly display it in the selected part of my room. I think this is a really cool project and I hope you would like to make something similar at home as well. Of course you don't have to have a glass dome, but if you want to buy one I can uh, suggest checking at IKEA or um, similar house uh, decoring shops because they may have them at the moment, they are quite popular. But it may be just three dimensional composition you will make on a little box or on a tray or anything else even on the canvas something that you will have at home and just look through the uh, elements and embellishments try to combine the mm, natural and um, uh, found objects to get uh, the look that you will like with the right glue and uh, a tiny bit of colors or glitters you may get amazing effects I wish you a great time, I hope you will get um, into this creative zone very quickly and let me know if you liked the video, if you, wanted, uh, if you want to see more of the videos like that, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and do ring a bell and let your friends know that we've got some cool videos here they may watch and get inspired to create. Thank you so much for coming, it was Finavar here from my studio and I hope to see you again here.